And let me welcome into the studio, we have Patricia Todd and we have Mary King. Ladies, good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. Good morning, Danny. <laughs> this is a very serious subject. Yes, um, yes. You know, the, I, I, I've been seeing some of the uh, information here that uh, I think there's like a worldwide epidemic of 800,000 people uh, that, that That's take right. their lives due mm-hmm. to suicide every year. And uh, obviously it's a, it's a problem that transcends all different demographics. And so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and kind of let you jump in, first of all, and introduce yourselves as to why uh, you are here today and to talk about the movie as well. We'll just kind of go from there, if you don't mind. Um, I'm here um, because I lost a son to suicide Uh in, in 1996 at the age of 17. And back then, there were no resources, nothing, no support group. You couldn't even talk about it. And so it was a very, uh, at that time, I did go back to SFA and be, to grad school, became a counselor, went mm-hmm. that route. But now I'm a full-time mental health advocate. And I'm just like, I think my main goal is just to normalize this talking about mental health, just sure. as we talk about physical health. So, yes, I'm here because I lost my son to suicide. But my goal is to bring mental health awareness so let's talk about what kevin hines who is the uh you know as, as i looked at the youtube video here, here's a guy that uh you know was going to be one of those stats yep. and uh, decided to take the leap off the golden gate bridge which i think is like 12 13 stories high 75 miles an hour and, mm-hmm. very, and it's very very rare that somebody lives to tell after doing that but he did and pick up his story from there if you, you don't bet mind. um so he often says every year, and as a year goes by, like now, he's saying, I'm, I'm, I've lived 18 years more than I should have. Right. He talks about going to the bridge, and he had a lot of things wrong in his life. He had a lot of things going on. He had a lot of mental health issues. He had um, personal issues that stemmed from that, which often happens. And as he walked the bridge, he was kind of looking to connect with someone. Um, and he, he just remembered this voice saying, you just need to jump. There's no hope. Mm-hmm. I think the most amazing part, I met him in New York City when I was walking the overnight. I do the overnight walk every year, and it was in New York City two years ago. And I didn't know who he was at the time, but I was just amazed by his um, positivity and everything. But he said the minute, the second he jumped, he regretted it. Even with as bad as his life was, as many problems as he had. Uh And when the Coast Guard came to pick him up, they couldn't believe he was alive. And so... The two thing, the things I really admire about him are that he's now giving back. Right. And with yesterday being Memorial Day, he it makes me think about all the work he does with the veterans. Twenty two per day die by suicide. Mm-hmm. There are thousands who continue to live with PTSD and all the problems that stem from that: relationship problems, marriage problems, addictions. But he also emphasizes that it's not like when he jumped and he didn't die and he recovered that he was okay i'm really healthy now he talks about how you have to maintain mental health on a day-to-day basis it's a process it's It's a process process. you know and and this is we should point out too that even though ptsd may be kind of a newer term this is nothing new i saw a documentary uh i think uh, yesterday for on memorial day uh about the uh the uh, marines that uh, were occupying uh, wake island and uh, they talk about the after effects. So this is this is something that is you know ever since wars started. This is something that's been there all the time. All the time. I you know I had uncles at World War II, and I had my uncle Dean. I remember would, would talk about being in World War II. He was gone for two and a half years. Right. And he still he was eighty something. One time we were talking, he said he remembered it like it was yesterday. The same triggers, the same uneasiness. I mean it it you know. But there was no treatment back then. But there was definitely PTSD, though. The, the movie that uh, features Kevin Hines and his story, uh, it's not only his story, but also, uh, as you mentioned, it's a hope that uh, people uh, that uh, want more details or maybe are suffering, this is a great uh, kind of a therapy as well. It is. And, you know, the, the other good thing to think about is it's for ages 10 and up. Okay. And so when, when, uh, when you... In all the advocacy work I do, I've noticed that it's getting younger and younger and younger, that the Mm -hmm. kids are starting to feel stressed. They're starting to, I think social media is a big part of that, but that's a whole other story. So the movie is Wednesday night, 7.30. You have to purchase your tickets in advance, but you can purchase them up to the minute you get there. It's a good way to bring your kids, the older kids, and then you start a conversation with them, and you'd be surprised how many of them are struggling 
with something that you don't know and it it just starts a lot of conversation that you think mary i do and the and the the film is is very uplifting right it's all about hope and recovery and how we are all in this together and so again we just like to stress it is tomorrow night may 30th at 7 30 at the lufkin nine okay so in the mall in yeah. the mall and, and then like you said this is such a big part because so many times starting the conversation is, is the biggest step absolutely really, i don't mean to pitch you on the spot here for s- yeah. specific statistics but in, in your position as an advocate uh, how would you define the issue of suicide in the east texas area is it pretty prevalent oh, it is in fact um tyler uh-huh. was just um highlighted as being the one of the top counties in the united states for loss at East Texas, it's really? very prevalent. It's it's um, it, in you. Know, I used to think we need more um, rehab, we need more behavioral health centers, and we do. Right. But my goal is to sort start at the very least support groups. So if someone goes to the hospital and they're they're very stressed and everything, they're not just sent home. They're like, we have this support group or a support group for parents, just something because it's very prevalent in this area. And it gets younger. The highest growing, the fastest growing statistic are ages 10 to 14. And a family or an individual uh, wants more details, wants to say, I need to turn to somebody. I need need some help. What, what do they do? If they contact me and they can send me a private message, I, a lot of people contact, I'm not, but I can lead them in a different direction sure. for right now until we get things set up. Because um, and you know and and hospice is working with this. I mean, we've, I've I've got we've got a lot of interest going in the community, right. and so we've got to start somewhere, and we have to have a hub of people who are willing to okay, let's be a support group for someone in crisis, and that's my goal is to even get the you know the police department involved, the hospitals involved, everybody that we kind of come together when there's a situation, and because uh, there's not there's no place you can. To send someone to get right better i mean that's just you know not going to happen right so if within the community we can do so much and with that being said anything else you want to pass along are we about the movie or just anything in general no we hope everyone will come out and and um, watch this because i think we'll all be able to take something from it yeah if you stop thinking exactly and you think every 40 seconds someone dies by suicide wow ladies thank you so much for coming by and talking about thank that. you danny thank you danny